is the 2022 Polygon Extrada 5, the best budget mountain bike under $1,000? After months of riding and testing, I made this video to answer just that question. The 2022 Polygon Extrada range got a lot of new improvements from the 2021 models and I'm going to break this video down into those six main components. The frame and geometry, suspension, specifications, riding, versatility and durability. As always, these will be in the video's chapters as well as listed below in the description. The new updates regarding the frame and geometry mean the Extrada series has quite a modern frame design. There are three different Extrada bikes, the 5, which is this one, the 6 and the 7. The 5 comes in at 1000 AED or 750 USD and this is the most affordable of the three bikes. The 6, which is the mid-range bike, comes in at 1200 AED or 850 USD and the 7, the best Extrada bike, comes in at 1500 AED or 1100 USD. All three bikes have wheel specific sizing, which means small to medium sized frames come with 27.5 inch wheels and medium to extra large frames come with 29 inch wheels. All bikes have 120 millimeters of travel up front, but the 7 has an air fork, unlike the core fork on the 5 and 6. They all have aluminium frames as well, with the Extrada 5 coming in at 14.3 kilos, the 6 coming in at 13.9 kilos, and the 7 coming in at 13.4 kilos. The geometry on this bike is also really nice, especially for a bike in this price range. I'm around 172 centimeters, so the 430mm reach was almost perfect for me. The effective seat angle is 75 degrees, which is quite steep, meaning you get a lot of room to move around when you stand up. The head tube angle is 67 degrees, which I think is the sweet spot for this bike, as it's not super slack, which means it's better for climbing and steering at low speeds, which in turn makes an ideal bike for riding on some easy to medium trails as well as riding on the road. The chainstay is nice and short, being 430mm on the 29 inch bikes. The seat tubes are a medium length, coming in at 425mm long. This self mean you could put a longer drop post in, such as a 150mm one, but they don't come pre-installed with a dropper post. The standover height is 693mm on a medium 29er, so you do get quite a lot of room to move the bike around underneath you, and the low BB height lowers the centre of gravity and helps on cornering. All of these features make for a really nice bike that's comfortable to ride off-road and on-road, and it suits the market of people who are going to be riding it. Onto the suspension, the Suntour XCM HLO forks have 120mm of travel and 30mm stanchions. They are coil forks, so not as adjustable as air forks, but there aren't really any bikes in this price range with air forks. The forks perform alright, they definitely help absorb some of the bigger hits like when you're doing jumps and drops, but the small bump absorption is next to nothing, so they aren't anything amazing. They lack some of the adjustability that you want, and the compression and rebound just isn't too smooth. Just like the forks on the Xtrada 6, the compression is really hard, and because of their lack of adjustability, there's not much room to change. Change it. I feel like the forks are fine for riding on the road and commuting, but where you actually want suspension out on the trail, they just don't perform too well and you can feel a lot of vibrations. It is worth noting that the forks have hydraulic lockout, so if you want to eliminate the compression of the suspension when you're riding uphill, that's a really nice feature to have just to make your ride that little bit easier. Overall, these forks are pretty much what you find on every other mountain bike in the sub $1,000 category, so they aren't particularly bad compared to other bikes, but they also aren't anything special. The Polygon Extrada 5 is a really good value packed hardtail mountain bike. The forks are not awesome but for the most part the people who are going to be riding this bike are not going to be doing huge jumps, drops and super gnarly trails. The drivetrain is pretty nice for a bike in this price range. It is a Shimano Dior M4100 group set which shifts smoothly and has a wide variety of gears from 11 teeth to 42 teeth and on this bike it's a 2x10 system. The bike comes with Entity Mitz tyres which are 2.25 inches thick. They are decent tyres off road and don't provide much resistance on the road and have a good roll speed. However, in muddy and wet conditions they don't perform the best and the front wheel especially does slip out. So if you live in a muddy or wet area, I would consider upgrading them to something like a Maxxis Minion which performs really well in bad conditions. I think that the Mitz tyres are a pretty good choice for this bike as if they were to get any bigger and thicker it would start to deteriorate the on-road capability which is where a lot of the people who buy this bike are going to be riding it. The wheel set is also really good for a bike at this price point. The rims are the Entity XL2 discs which are double walled and come tubeless tape from factory and that combined with the tubeless ready tyres means you just need sealant and valves to make this bike tubeless. Moving on to the brakes, the Xtra 5 has Tektro HD M275 hydraulic disc brakes with 160mm rotors. These provide good braking power, however upgrading the resin only pads and rotors to metallic ones for example will squeeze even more power out of them. My friend who rides this bike crashed on a berm and bent the lever so he had to replace the brakes with a Shimano Asira BLMT401 which is an entry level mountain bike brake. Now onto the finishing kit, I like the sort of 
powerful design and it is by far my favourite style of grips as it provides a softer area for your thumb and a harder grippier area for the outside of your hands. A major downside to these grips is that they are not lock-on grips so they can just slide off the handlebars and move around a bit when you're riding. The bike just came with some unbranded plastic flat pedals which I think would be fine for the majority of people riding this bike. However, my friend decided to upgrade them for $40 to some Rock Bros metal flat pedals with pins. I think that this is a really good upgrade to do because now no matter the weather you have grip and you just feel a bit more solid and connected to the bike. The saddle is the Entity Void and even as one of the more budget components on the bike it still felt great even after a long day of riding. I found the stem on bars to be quite good as I prefer a shorter stem and longer bars. My only complaint is that compared to my T7 which has slightly more swept back bars these bars felt really straight but it's really all down to personal preference. After riding the Xtrata 5, I can say that it's a really comfortable bike to ride with only a few downsides. It feels really fast and responsive thanks to the slack geometry and not having really beefy tyres. The bike definitely feels a lot lighter than the 14.3 kilos that it actually is. Because of the steep seat angle, you can get up over the cranks when you're climbing. And thanks to the hydraulic lockout, you can climb without losing all your energy through the suspension. The stack feels like a good height and it lets you put a bit more weight on the front end when going uphill. The drivetrain is pretty quiet when you're riding, but it does still make a little bit of noise. Other than that, the bike is just really nice and quiet overall. One thing is that the 170mm cranks, like on my T7, do make it easy to pedal strike as they are pretty long. One thing I think is great about this bike is how versatile it is. It is a great bike for commuting and riding on the road as it doesn't provide loads of resistance. It also performs well off-road and on the trail doing some small to medium jumps and drops. The Xtrata 5 is also good for riding on a pump track and practicing our skills in a more controlled environment. I think this is a really important aspect of the bike as it means it's great for someone who can only have one bike but likes to do a lot of things with their bike. Overall you can use this bike to ride almost anywhere and it's just a great all-round bike that isn't too expensive. During the few months of my friend having this bike, most of it has held up well, but there have been a few shortcomings when it comes to the durability. The frame and the paint have been fine, and there is no premature scratches or cracks, and the forks and brakes still work like new, which is expected. The main issue with the durability of this bike is the drivetrain. After only a few weeks of riding, the chain started slipping, however with some adjustment of the derailleur, it should be fixed. Aside from the occasional grease on the drivetrain, the bike hasn't needed any other maintenance. Overall though, I think this bike holds up well to the elements, and with the normal maintenance, it will last for years. I think this bike has held up well to its expectations as a beginner to mid-range hardtail mountain bike. I'd recommend it to people who are still in or just past the beginning phase of mountain biking and want a good quality bike without breaking the bank, but who also ride on-road as well as off-road on some easy to medium trails. I think that it's a really great bike to progress on and it has a lot of potential for upgrades and improvements. It has the value, quality and fun factor that people are going to be looking for in the Polygon Xtrata 5. If you look at the model up from this bike, the Xtrata 6, you can find that review right here. If you like the look of the other bike featured in this video, you can find that review right here. I'll have more mountain biking reviews and videos coming soon, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.